Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks so much for joining us here on KXA and Live. I'm Will Dupree coming to you from the KXA and Live studio. We have a live look there into downtown Austin, what is shaping up to be a pretty day out there, but also very warm. If you want more details about the forecast, they are on our website right now. I know that's a big thing on people's minds, but we also wanted to jump on here today, this afternoon, and tell you about a story that just published on our website a couple of hours ago. Here's the headline right here. Mild COVID-19 infection affects brain structure, UT research shows. This may pique a lot of people's interest right now, those of us who have even recovered from COVID-19 hearing about this research. So we wanted to find out a little bit more about what our reporter uncovered and wouldn't you know it, the reporter who did this story is one of our KXAN interns this semester. Please welcome Maggie Wolanski. Maggie, thank you so much for being here. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, Will. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, very nice to see you. Uh, Maggie, you are a senior at UT Austin, yes. graduating soon, and uh, we have this story from you out there. Tell us what inspired you, what made you start looking into this particular research being done at UT Austin? Yes, so it was actually my brother who found the original article, hmm. and the first study was actually in the UK, and it was that they had found that the brain structure had shrunk in areas where the brain associates with smell. And so I thought that was super interesting, and then connecting it back here to UT and what UT Austin is doing, and I found that they had this whole long-form COVID studies that are happening at UT Health Austin. And so I talked to them a little bit more about how they're doing research right now, and they're also introducing an art program as well to help those long-term patients who are suffering with symptoms still. Yeah, we will go into the UT research uh, a little more in depth in just a moment, but I want to highlight something that you talked about in your story, which was a study done at the University of Oxford looking into uh, what brain scans and cognitive tests have shown even for mild COVID-19 infections. What did you find? Yes, yeah, so this was really interesting. So I talked with one of the researchers who actually worked on the study, mm -hmm. and what they did is they compared MRI scans in the UK from people before they caught COVID and then afterwards, and they looked at those brain scans, and what they found is in areas of the brain that are associated with smelling, the red yellow which you will see are areas that associate smell and they had found that when someone loses their smell with COVID infection those parts of the brain actually shrunk hmm. which is just really crazy to me and that's kind of gave me a little bit more of this interest to look into what el what other research is being done right now to understand that to understand the impact of COVID. Yeah, so this uh, graphic is available in Maggie's story right now which is on kxan.com if you'd like to find <clears throat> Excuse me, if you'd like to find a little bit more about uh, what that research uncovered, but going back to what's happening at UT Austin, tell us about the research that's going into long-term COVID-19. Yes, so I got in contact with Dr. Esther Melemed, and her team is studying the neurological impact of COVID, as well as what these long-term symptoms, how they're impacting patients. And so what they're doing right now is they're actually in their lab that I got to see their first step procedures they take, which is using patients' blood samples. And they do a cell count and count on the white blood cells that are in patients' blood. And then they're using this research to see how the overall immune system has been impacted from COVID infection and she also just talked to me a little bit more about why some of these patients are experiencing these long-term symptoms and exactly what they are. Let's go through what some of these long-term symptoms are. You created this really neat graphic that broke down exactly what we're dealing with in some of these patients' cases. Tell us about this. Yes, so as you can see, there's changes in taste, lung issues, visual changes, dizziness. There's also a loss of hearing or also hearing like a constant ringing sound, which I found pretty interesting. Changes in smell. The most common one though is neurological in nature. It is brain fog. So it's where you have instances where you just aren't as aware and you're having this confusion in your day and it's impacting so many people because they're not knowing what's wrong and ultimately it's coming from this original mild COVID infection. Hmm. And a lot of what uh, the research is showing is uh, into this long form COVID-19 and what those symptoms are and also uh, this post-COVID program that UT, is Aust UT Austin is doing in particular. Uh, describe what the work is they're looking into with that. Yes, so they're inviting patients who did suffer with COVID to come in and be a part of their research. And then what they're also doing is having educators come in, listen to seminars, listen to lectures, and just try and gain a better understanding of why some people are experiencing these long-term symptoms. What's pretty interesting 
interesting what we can talk about a little bit more is now that there's the introduce, introduction of an art program to help with these patients and give them back this creative aspect into their lives. What kinds of things are they doing with the art? Yes, so this is awesome. It was first introduced by Sam Bozzi, who's a graduate student, and he works on Dr. Esther Malemet's team. And so he introduced an eight-part class series that does shading, it does shaping, um, and it is offered for free. You just have to provide your own types of art equipment, like papers, pencils. Um, and it's great because it kind of gives another environment for these patients to come together to connect, but also to gain back these creative aspects um, in their lives. If you're just joining us, Maggie Walansky is one of our interns here at KXAN News this uh, semester, and we are very glad to have her because she has put out this story looking into research into the effects of COVID-19. So many of us have uh, gotten infected and recovered, fortunately, but some are dealing with those long-term effects, so that's what her story really looks into. Uh, the researchers you spoke to, Maggie, though, are hoping to do more research in the future. What kinds of things are they hoping to get into then? Yes, so what was really interesting besides knowing this research of what exactly happened to parts of the brain and why some people are experiencing these long-term symptoms, they're right now trying to look into the hormonal states, hmm. also the environmental states, and what I found really interesting too is how people socialize in different ways during the pandemic, so how alcohol consumption can also play a factor into impacting one's body with COVID infection. Potentially many more stories to look into. Yes, Well, definitely. Maggie, I, before we go, I just want to say great job with this story. It's very informative and very interesting. So I hope anybody who's watching this will go onto our website and look a little more in depth into what she's uh, reported out there. But tell us about your future plans. What are you hoping to do after you graduate? Yes, so I am so interested in pursuing a career in broadcast journalism. I graduate in two weeks from wow. UT, <laughs> which is pretty crazy, but hopefully you can catch me reporting on the news in the future. All right, well, we hope to have you back here on KXAN sometime. Thank you. All right, Maggie Walansky, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. And again, great job with your story. Thank you, Will. All right, everybody. Uh, if you would like to find out more about this story and read more in depth into what she reported, it's available on KXAN.com and on the KXAN News app that you can download on your smartphone if you haven't done so already. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll see you back here a little later this afternoon with another conversation with one of our interns about a story that she did focusing on UT research that's happening just down the street from the station. So tune in for that at 4.30. Again, I'm Will Dupree in the KXAN Live Studio. We'll see you back here then. Have a good one, everybody. Take care.